There we go. Okay, so I've got a background in my scene and now I'm gonna uh, use a, a photograph to composite in. I'm just gonna create a new material. Turn reflectance off and the color of the material is gonna be an image I just downloaded. Okay, and then I'll put that onto the background, okay? So the reason why I chose this image is it's got a big blank space that I can use. And also I can kind of see the direction of the shadows so that I can see the sun is coming down and it's casting these directional shadows here. The cars, you can see it's sort of like a very high noon kind of scene and I can, I can kind of get a sense as to where the sunlight is coming from. So that's always helpful because uh, we're gonna try to match some lighting as well. So the very rudimentary way to do this is to look at your uh, perspective view and try to arrange this so that you can make the grid look as though it's lining up with the ground, okay? So by rotating and moving, you can kind of get a sense of the perspective of the scene that you'd be working within, right? So I'm gonna drop the horizon line down to like my eye level. And then I'm going to kind of rotate. The cars are kind of a good, good avenue. So see how this line kind of looks like it's going back into space over that way. So that works pretty well. I mean, this is again very rudimentary, but it it, it helps to um, have uh, the, the sort of basic kind of setup so you get the scene. So now what we're going to do is we're going to need to have a plane to catch the shadows. So you could do a plane or a disc. Either one of those are going to be fine. And then you're gonna to wanna to make it big enough and place it where you're gonna want your object to be. So the other thing I can do is see how the plane is kind of lining up pretty good in perspective with the sidewalk. So I know that this is gonna work out you know, fairly well. I might wanna tip it up just a little bit. That looks a little bit better. It's okay if it goes over the cars. I just wanna make sure that this is kind of lined up. So for the most part, I'm, I'm, I'm good with this. Uh, okay, so now what we do is we're going to take this material and we're going to add it to the plane. Okay. Now when you do that, it's going to automatically do UVW wrapping, which we don't want. What we want to do with this is have frontal projection. Okay. So what that is going to do is line up the image with the sequence and it's going to look like this. Now it looks all uh, bad and blurry right now because we need to add some compositing to it. So what we do is go to the plane object and we do tags and render tags compositing. And a couple of things we wanna make sure we check. One is compositing background, okay? We, want, we don't want the object to cast shadows. We want it to receive shadows, seen by camera rays, all that sort of stuff. So now, we do not see the plane anymore because it's same texture, everything is lined up in the scene. So let's go to my content browser. Let's find a good model to use. Maybe, maybe some fruit, fruit and vegetables. How about a nice onion? Why not? Whoa, where did it go? Okay, it's a very tiny onion. So we need to make it much bigger. Of course, I have the worst mouse ever. And I don't know where the textures went. What happened to this onion? There we go. Okay, so now I've got a humongous onion in the parking lot, because why wouldn't that happen? And I'm just gonna, gonna rotate this around a little bit. And I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so then a scene like this uh, is gonna look pretty good with uh, a sky object, right? Because it gives us the sun and, and that sort of thing. So physical sky could be really great. The thing about the physical sky though, it's gonna interrupt your background, okay? So physical sky then is also gonna need a compositing tag. 
And in this one, we want to say seen by camera off. So it's gonna, gonna do everything else, but it's not gonna be seen by the camera. And we can start to render this out, all right? So all we need to do now is kind of adjust for some of the lighting, which is here, the shadows kind of going in the wrong direction. So what I might wanna do is this physical sky to me does not look like November. It looks maybe more like June. That's probably better. Let's see what that does for us. Good, but the shadow's going the wrong way. So then we'll just take the physical sky and orient it so that the shadow is coming from the other direction a little bit. That's probably better. And you just kind of kind of play around a little bit until you get the sequence to kind of merge the way that it can go. Um, let's see, the shadow is a little bit too blue. It's more gray in the scene. Maybe we want to increase the density, 120 perhaps. Let's see what that does for us. Too, too dark and blue. So there are some like color correction things that you can do with this. Um, maybe 105 is better. We need this to be more gray instead of blue. It's using the light that's in the sequence as well. So you could play around with, um, it's not too bad though. You could play around with um, a little bit of, of color balancing the sun. So right now, if you wanted to do your own custom color, you could play around with that, which is going to change the, the, the sequence of the scene. So, you know, there's a, there's a little bit of, of, of kind of messing around with how you, um, you composite this. Uh, ultimately, it's lining up the lighting, lining up the object, getting the plane, something to catch shadows across the surface, and, um, and kind of building out that sort of platform in that way. So that's kind of like the, the very basics of, of compositing. And then it can go much further as well. There's even um, uh, camera, com uh, camera calibration where you can have a video in place and sort of work with it in that way.